Ola Dimeji Ajegbile is a UX consultant and business leader who started his entrepreneurial journey at 15. He created an Afrocentric photo library used by over 180 million users and founded an online design school with 50,000 plus students. He is now the co-founder and CEO of Photopool, an AI-powered photo sharing platform. Ola Dimeji also coaches entrepreneurs and authored Who Sets the Standard, a book on success and happiness. Today, Dimeji will be showing us how African creators can reach global audiences with their talent. It will be phenomenal. Let's check it out. Um, hi, I hope everyone can hear me. My name is Ola Dimeji, and I feel like there's been introduction already, so I'll just sort of go straight into it. I believe most of you listening are here to understand more into how to get started or how to sort of branch out of whatever industry you're in into a more global space. And I should say this for a start. It is quite easy if you understand the fundamentals on how to do this right. But then the extra part of this is that everyone can do it as long as you have the required skill set as well as the knowledge it takes. But the most important part of all of this would be the community you're part of that enables you to think beyond the current space you're in, even into a more global space. So uh, just to do it, a more deeper intro to myself. My name is Ola Dimeji, and originally I'm an architect and I practiced for eight years before I took a break to focus fully on content creation, um, building digital products, and getting to where I am now, leading um, an AI startup. My journey has been one filled with so many, should I say, so many intersections where I find myself in spaces where I felt like I shouldn't be in. And over time, I think the story here goes beyond what we might probably hear about today. But in a nutshell, I'm a UX consultant. I'm also the co-founder and CEO of Photopool. It's an AI-powered startup. And pretty much we help event hosts collect photos from those who attend their events. But in between all of that, I actively create content on social media. And my content sort of revolves around helping other persons, creators, entrepreneurs, designers, to leverage that unique part of themselves, to build a personal brand, to talk about the things they want to talk about, to pretty much figure life out. Today, I'll be taking you through a series of thought-provoking engagements. And I'm hoping that by the end, you'll get to a place where you understand more into how you can set yourself apart, even in a very, very competitive market. So my content creation journey started in 2018. And that was when it was quite active. In 2018, I decided I was going to quit my job as an architect and pursue a more flexible route, which turned out to be the most daunting thing I've ever done in my life. Content creation is not for the faint of art. It takes you into a place where you feel like you're on top of the world and then smashes you down over and over again till you can pick yourself back up and try again. So. If you're thinking this is a get rich quick um, industry, I'm sorry, it's not. It's one that requires tenacity, it's one that requires putting in your, I mean, putting in work time and time again. And like they say, or like we say in the industry today, consistency is king or content is king or whatever the statement is, you know what it is. So first, I won't be using any presentations for today because I'm speaking as plain as I can and as raw as it probably will be. So if you need to take notes, if you need to put things down, if you need to document anything, I want it to be in your own words so that it feels more personal and more rich to you throughout the entire conversation. So um, like I said, I started my journey as an architect. And then from architecture, I started learning how to design. And I practiced brand and agency design, UI, UX, uh, web design, and all sort of different parts of design. And 
there was this part of me longing to find something more challenging, something that feels more natural to me, because I've always learned that design is sort of fixed towards buildings. And I wanted to understand design beyond buildings. I wanted to understand design as a way of life. And that was what led me down the rabbit hole of experiencing what it takes to uh, create something that people can connect with or people can resonate with. And the bulk of all of this revolves around the kind of story it is you have to tell. We're talking about how you can reach a global audience, how you can go from you know Africa to the world. But then first, if you've not made any sort of impact in the Africa or in whatever country in Africa you're currently in, it will be very difficult for you to scale globally because there has to be something you have that is worth leveraging that takes you from Africa to the global stage. And for me, one of such was architecture and design and then finding a balance between both. So in 2015, when I realized that architecture wasn't going to be the thing for me, after spending six years to study this, I was looking for something that gave me more flexibility, something that allowed my creativity to go wild without restrictions. And I started practicing design. And it took me three years to understand a number of things I'm going to be sharing with you today. But then it took me another five years to really get how to do it right and how to break out of whatever stereotypes it is with content creators, with digital creators, with entrepreneurs today. And this is the story. So, First, I decided that I'm going to start making design posts on Instagram where you design Bible verses or quotes and talk about it, write a few captions and just publish. And I was doing that one once every two weeks just so that I could stay consistent to it because I was working a nine to five. I mean, it wasn't a nine to five, it was a contract role. I was working that and the boundary to sort of do other things wasn't there. So while Coming back from work, I would just sort of go on Canva and sort of put a few designs together. At the time, Canva was relatively new, 2017, 2018. And I would design on the on the on the boss going home and publish it. And I did that for three months. And then after three months, I started to see that okay, there is a way I can share more into my design experience and me being an architect. So I said creating very short audio clips, which would last 45 to 60 seconds, because Instagram didn't allow longer videos at the time. So 60 seconds, and I used to call them the brand series. I'll do the voiceover and then put it on a design and then add the waveform, like a podcast, and then do subtitle on it. And I did that for another three months. And I realized how people started to see more into what I was doing. They wanted to, people were asking questions. It felt, it felt very exciting to see that people are valuing the things I'm doing. And then three months after that, this is nine months now, I finally decided I was going to start a podcast. And the podcast was going to focus on one particular thing. How other persons who are trying to start out something from nothing can learn from people who have been there before. And the idea just came, you know what? Oftentimes I would have conversation with other people in the industry, creators, designers, entrepreneurs, business owners, whatever kind of person. And there was so much I could learn from these people. And I thought to myself, maybe if I started recording these conversations, so that I can listen to it again, maybe to make you know me learn faster. So I started recording these conversations, and by recording them, I would go back home and take notes of the things I'm learning from these different people I'm encountering. And then it just came, it just dawned on me that wait, what if other persons could hear these conversations as well? But then the recordings I used to do were very, very crude, they were not refined, there was background noise, so many different things. So I told myself that I would need to buy you know, a microphone and a camera to get started. And from October 2018 up until February 2019, I didn't do anything because I was saving up to buy a camera and a microphone while I was still pursuing a design, freelancing design career. So three, four months went by, I didn't buy anything. And then the period where I was supposed to buy these tools, um, there was something that happened at home and I needed to support what was happening. And I just had to put up all of the money I had saved to buy this camera and the microphone into this thing. When I did that, I was back to zero. There was no money to buy any tools. And I'd wasted four months just saving only to sort of part ways with the money. So I just had to pick myself up and I was like, you know what, I'm going to go on YouTube and sort of find out what is the other way to start a podcast without having to spend so much. 
and I found a YouTuber called Matt Diavela. And I went back to his older videos and I saw how he started his first set of videos. He will use paper lantern and a bulb to light a space and then, you know, film on his camera. I used to be a photographer, a professional videographer then. But I don't have a camera, but I can buy a paper lantern. So I bought a paper lantern and I fixed it. And then I brought out my phone. It was a LG V20 I was using then. And I recorded the very first episode, February 2019. And as I recorded it, I published it. And from publishing, I realized that quite a number of persons were excited to see this thing I was starting out. And there was a lot of support, which was very, very exciting to me. So I kept on to it. I was doing the episodes every single week. And then it got to the point I needed to start interviewing people for this podcast. And there was no guest for me to interview because I hadn't made any friends. I didn't have any social following. I think I had like 300 followers at the time. So I reached out to my sister. And I was like, see, oh, there's this thing I just started. And I would really appreciate it if you can be my first guest. Because she's a fashion designer. She studied computer science, but never practiced. She just finished school. Didn't even collect a certificate. Went all out to start fashion design. And I wanted to understand what the process was for her. So we did an interview. The audio was really bad. <laughs> because I had to use one camera to shoot both. But I managed to still put it out there. Regardless of how terrible it seemed, I still put the video out there. And then I had a few people in my circle then that sent me feedback on how to be a better presenter, how to leverage really good audio quality, how to get you know digital audio recording software that would help my audio get better. And I learned a lot from those very terrible beginning days. And then my content improved. As I was improving, I started YouTube full time. I started making videos. They probably were getting like 20 views, 15 views. My podcast wasn't getting much views, probably between 20 and 30. But I would go back on Instagram and act as though I'm the best thing in town. My podcast is big. And I'll just talk about it like I'm excited, which I was actually really excited about. Even though it was just 20 people listening to it, I was excited. So I'll share, you know, whatever it is I'm learning, my process podcasting, now I'm setting up the lighting, the space. I pretty much took people through the journey of how I'm doing this thing every single day. And then with my design journey, I was learning to start to do a few more things differently. So I started creating stock photos of Pexels. And with the stock photos I was creating, after about three months, there were about over a, a million views on just three pictures. So that prompted me to start creating more. And by the middle of 2020, 2019, uh, my pixel engagement has gotten up to 10 million in six months. And then from pixels alone, I was able to get access to a global community. But that was when I realized that, okay, there's actually a lot that could happen by just putting yourself out there. I realized that people from India, people from the US, from Canada, from Australia, from China were using the photos I was putting on Pexels. And out of nowhere, I got, a, I got an email from a lawyer in Canada who said he really admires what I was doing with Pexels. And he, as a project he wants to he wants me to be on, which was a redesign of his law firm's website. And that was about the biggest project I had to take at that time, which was still amazing because I didn't do anything to get access to that or just by putting my pictures on Pexels. And that was my very first attempt to crack in into the global market. And by doing that, I started to see how there's actually a lot of potential in me leveraging my personal brand to be able to get to places that physically I can't get to, but the works of my ends can get me there. So I doubled up on everything I was creating. I published 500 pieces of content in 2019. And I told myself that in 2020, I have to double or triple that and I got to work. From January 2019 up until March 2019, I engaged in a 90 days short form video creation exercise where every single day I'll go on TikTok and make a video about a topic I'm excited about, publish it. I mean, the ones that are nice or the ones I feel like is worth publishing, I'll publish them. And after 90 days, I successfully created 117 different pieces of content, but only posted 50 of them on TikTok. And to me, that felt like a failure. But my TikTok went from 300 to 4,000 within that period. 
And checking my analytics, I realized that the majority of my audience were people from the US. So I was like, okay, the same principle of putting myself out there is working again. So I'll continue to do it. And all of this was based on consistency and actively learning how to do something that people at the time didn't really consider as a thing. Because in 2020, short form video wasn't really a thing. Nobody really took it seriously until Instagram launched Reels in August of 2020. And by August of 2020, I already had close to 100 short form content already published on TikTok that I just brought back to Instagram. So within the first, I would say, first 100 days of Reels on Instagram, I was publishing a new piece of content every single day from the archives of things I've done between January 2020 and March 2020. And that gave me this age. So from August up until September 2020, I had gathered close to 12,000 followers on Instagram by just reposting content that I created months before. And to me, at the time when I was doing all of these tests, it was just for me to learn how to do it right, you know, explore, learn how to make better videos and like take storytelling quite seriously. But little did I know that I was creating a bank of possible content that will be useful to me in the future. So what I'm sharing here is a system that I didn't know at the time was a viable system. It was just this very genuine zest to want to learn and improve and get better when it comes to making videos, creating content and doing this content creation full time. And while doing all of this, I wasn't making any money from it. The major source of my income at the time after I quit architecture was from design gigs, freelancing gigs, which was pretty much okay. And then donations from Pexels. So occasionally I'll get people donate from, for using my pictures on Pexels. And this was what I was using to fill my generator, to do internet content and to do data and a few other things. And it seemed okay. It was, it was working fine. Until ending of 2020, um, someone reached out to me and was like, Dimitri, I've seen you do these sort of funny videos and skits really well in a very creative manner. And we believe that you can actually do a lot more. And there's a brand that needs your services for brand collaboration and would love to work with you. So the person asked me what was my rate. And I didn't know what the rate card was then because I'm just doing this thing for fun or just to like put myself out there. So I didn't know what to say. And I just told the person that whatever it is that they have to offer. Anyway, the deal didn't fall through and I pretty much just moved on in my life. 2021 was the year where I understood the extent to which content creation or being on the social media space, being a digital creator, creating online can do for you. I became very active when it came to sharing my thoughts about specific topics like branding, content creation, wellness for creatives, um, starting something from nothing. And I was still hosting my podcast every single week for close to two years. Balancing all of this was quite difficult, but one thing kept me going, which was that as long as one person learns from these things I'm doing, I think I'm okay. And that was the first time I came across Seller because I started thinking about what's the other way for me to start to earn from this thing I'm doing. And I thought about it. I've been making podcasts for a year now and people have been seeing the journey and the process. So what am I going to do? Let me find a way to monetize this content creation thing. And let me do, you know, a podcast workshop or teach people how to podcast with the most minimal tools, starting from nothing and put all of that together. So I devised a strategy, which I feel like is still relevant today. And I've used it for multiple projects outside of content creation. And it has gotten me really great results. And the strategy is this, I have this big thing to host a workshop that people will get, people will pay for, and they won't be paying something small. They'll be paying about 10,000, 20,000 for the, for, the, for, the, for the workshop. But then I can't just come online and say, I'm hosting the workshop, come and pay. Nobody would come. So let me create a step-by-step -step funnel or guide that will make it easy for me to get people to come and learn from me. So I started with Instagram Lives. And I did Instagram lives for two weeks, twice every week for two weeks, which is six lives, sorry, four lives. And the four lives, I spoke about podcasting, the benefits, what it can do for you, why it's the next big thing. 
That was ending of 2020. And then first week, first week in January, I decided to do a webinar, which was going to last four hours. And the webinar, the webinar was just going to be very direct, talking about the ground up process to starting a podcast. And I put a fee on it, which was 100 naira, and I hosted that on Seller. So I got people to sign up, they got the links via Seller, and pretty much I did the workshop. So I did the webinar. The webinar, a lot of people came, about um, 170 people came. And to me, getting that paid was some good money at the time. So I was like, okay, 170,000 naira, good. And I used that to buy my very first camera. I bought my camera, I, I upgraded my microphone and a few other things. And I started, you know, delving deeper into content creation, making, I, I started making more videos, started doing talking headshots and it made things a lot more smoother. But remember that my original goal was to do a workshop, a three days workshop and people will pay 10,000 naira for. So I waited another five months, yeah, five months to now do the workshop. So I had done the Instagram lives to let people know what podcasting is and what the benefits would be. And then I did a webinar to give them snippets into what it really entails and how they can get started. And I made sure that on the call, people that were coming to the workshop were able to start their podcast or refine their idea, their topics, and pretty much everything they need to start the podcast. And then the replay for that webinar, I put it into a Google Drive and then sold it for a thousand naira. And I can't remember the metrics now, but quite a number of persons bought that. And it's just something that, you know, until I stopped it last year from going out to people because there was more information that could be used. They could find these things online now. So there was no need to sell it anymore. So from just the webinar and the and the live, I had made close to 400,000 Naira. And it was okay. But the original goal was to create a workshop. So for the workshop, I started promoting it and I promoted it for three months. And throughout the entire period of the promotion, I got 76 people to register for the workshop and they paid 10,000 naira each. And that was the very first time I saw the extent to which I could earn as a creator outside of brand partnership, which I never got, and I'd never gotten one at the time. So this strategy was quite effective. And I just thought to myself, what if I applied it to every other thing? And I kept on making more videos to reach more people, started putting out digital products. I put out a how to podcast workbook and, work, and, and, and guide. I put out a DIY workspace guide and a few other guides, um, productivity guides, so many different things. And these are things that I don't talk about them on my page, but people get to buy them because they understand the value in it. And I was able to sustain myself to a great extent alongside freelancing as a designer. But then breaking out into the global market was very difficult because I didn't see the connecting point between these videos I'm creating, these courses I'm creating, and the global market. It felt very restricted to the Nigerian market. And that was when I encountered someone who opened my eyes to see more beyond what it takes to be a creator. He said, stop thinking of yourself as a creator. You're an entrepreneur using content creation to reach your customers or your audience or your consumers. And I was like, oh, that actually makes a lot of sense. So my messaging and my strategy changed. I started making videos that spoke deeper into what it takes to start something. And that was when my breaking out to the global market started. And then I realized that there were three things I needed to start doing differently. First is I needed to start creating more audience building content, content that resonates with people that re people can relate to, content that gets them to go, yeah, that happens to me too. And I started making creative skit-like videos where I would share some sort of insecurity about being an introvert or being single or something, and people would resonate with it. And then before I knew it, my audience started growing. From 12,000 in 2021 January, and I did like some close to 80 videos in the first quarter, and I was already on 30K followers. By August 2021, I started making videos. I was talking more into how to pivot from just being a designer or creator into being a full-time creative where you use all your skills to leverage 
you know, like you leverage your skills to be able to do different things. So how to monetize your content, how to not get fixed into what the algorithm is saying, how to create genuine content and authentic content and meaningful content. And I started talking more into, okay, why I believe most people who are introverts get to be better at creating content or doing creative stuff than others. And then there was a particular piece of content I created in that period that just took off. And between September 2021 and December, I had gathered a hundred, close to 100,000 followers in the space of three months from making videos that resonated with people that was like audience building content. And while that was happening, I started creating community-based content as well. I released a newsletter called Figuring Life Out, and I was sending that out every single week. Occasionally, when I had something to sort of sell, which wasn't active, I would share it on the newsletter. And before I knew it, it's entirely sold out just from the newsletter. I never even talk about it on my social platforms. And that's when I realized that community is actually a good thing as well. So leveraging my skills, my experiences as a designer and architect, taking it into marketing, and then finding out to leverage it for content creation became very seamless. But then the breaking point of this happened when ending of 2021, um, I don't know, many people probably will remember Blessing Nabeng. Blessing Nabeng reached out to me and was like, Dim, there's this company I'm working with that wants to do this and that and that and that, and I think it'd be perfect for it. And that was how I got to get my very first brand deal with Starks, which paid me really well. And we did two collaborations, which was smooth. And just by doing that, I opened myself up to what people would call influencer kind of a thing today. I never thought about myself as an influencer. I was just somebody who loves creating videos and sharing my experiences online. Even till today, I probably say I'm not an influencer. But I enjoyed working with brands that resonated a lot more with my kind of personality and what I really enjoy to use. And gradually, I started working with brands. And this, this created a snowballing experience. You know, all through 2022, I worked with close to 18 different brands from Amazon Prime um, to Pilo and a few other brands, Jumia and a couple. And by doing all of these things, I started to pick the interest of global brands as well. But then this, this didn't just come naturally. I had to start reaching out to brands that I really wanted to work with that were outside Nigeria. And I was getting a lot of no's, you know, maybe for them to send the products down or for them to just logistics was a, was, was a really big problem. And that's when I realized that, you know what, for me to even get this thing right, I need to have a different mindset and not really position myself as just a creator, but position myself more as a consultant who can do a lot more things than just content creation. So I started pitching brand storytelling services. I started pitching um, brand, branding and identity, identity programs, you know, um, services. I started pitching um, storytelling masterclasses, workshops, and a few different things. And from there, I started to work with brands that were starting out, startups that were outside Nigeria that needed those kind of services. So from brand storytelling to audio storytelling, audio brand storytelling, the art of storytelling, I did quite a number of those workshops with, I think, seven brands that were not Nigerian. Three were just Africa, and then the remaining were in the US and Canada. And this began that opening space. That's when I saw that, okay. It has to go beyond just content creation. It has to go beyond just making videos. It has to be added value that they know to be something that can go beyond, you know, just making videos. I know making videos is a thing, but your experiences can take you farther than just making videos. You can, like, as a content creator, you understand that you write scripts, you focus on storytelling, you do research, do SEO, so many different things. Is there a way you can strip all of these things down to become services that can be offered to brands? Because most brands don't just want videos. They want storytelling. They want their brand voice to be stronger. They want their messaging to be stronger. And I combined all of this eventually into one full program, which at the time I called Amplify Your Impact. And it was fine. And I started working with more brands and everything sort of solidified. But then in 2022, uh, my life started to change drastically. I was about to get married. I was planning to relocate. And I knew that a lot of things is going to take a pause. So 
what I did was to create a plan around making sure that I had active content and so many other room to be able to work with bigger organizations outside, outside Nigeria without sacrificing my livelihood. It didn't work out fine. The move created something that I'd never experienced before. Working with Nigerian brands became difficult. And then working with global brands was almost impossible because I don't have a global brand or a global audience. I have more Nigerian audience. And now I'm in, a, I'm in the United Kingdom where I really don't know much of what's going on. So I needed to pretty much start from scratch. And by starting from scratch, the strategy was to reach out and do cold emailing like a crazy person. I was sending out emails. I love this brand. I would love to work with you. I have a social number of audience. I would love to do this. None of those really put out any result until I did something very significant, which was to reposition the way I was approaching content creation into not just content now, but stories. So I started sharing more into my life, you know, my experiences as a father, you know, what it felt like to be in a new country. And then I started exploring tools and resources that would help creators and designers improve their own workflow. And little did I know that that was going to become the foundation for where I am today. Within all of this, I started talking into the tools I use every day, how I create my workspaces and all. And my very first big break came when a partnership with Google came, Google Pixel. And that was like the explosion point. After that particular collaboration with Google, the recent, the new set of emails I was sending was centered around the collaborations I've done with Google, Amazon, just to put in global brands as part of what I was doing. And it worked. You know, today I've been able to work with Fiverr, I've been able to work with Coursera, I've been able to work with HP. Um, I've been able to work with Amazon, Amazon Prime, and a few other brands that are quite like that are really well known and some that are not well known, quite big. And all of this came from understanding that every phase of this journey had to require new strategy and trying to modify things till it works. If it doesn't work, I go back to the drawing board to see what am I not doing right here. But there are a number of things that I have not mentioned that really made this possible. First is that. I understood that reaching out wasn't my strong suit. So um, I had a few people in my in my life that understood lead generation to the best of the best. And I engaged them to say, you know what? I'm really good with making the videos to doing the storytelling, to communicating my values and ideas, but I'm not so great with reaching out. Let's work together. And that was where the collaboration started. So I was working with someone who knew lead generation and they were helping to really get to like places I can't get to. But then backtracking back to the videos and the pixels that I was creating, the more people kept seeing these pictures, the more people were noticing me as a brand, as a personal brand. And whenever I was talking about it, for example, in my introduction, you were here building a library of Afrocentric stock photos. That became a major setting point that really helped to reach out to certain brands. And over, for the past six months, I would say every single week I've worked with a different brand. Sometimes they're not on my public platform. They are on the brand's you know, play page or their storytelling is getting better or I'm working on their UX experience and their marketing. And all of this happened because I decided to start first putting out videos and pictures on pixels. And then the second part is leveraging the whole thing with storytelling and telling a story that goes beyond just making videos online. You can make videos online, but if you don't pair it with storytelling, active storytelling, it can be quite difficult to really get anything out of it. Now, I'm sure you might hear other people speak and tell you the different strategies to going global and all of that. But I'll just say that if you cannot make headway locally, it'll be quite difficult to make headway globally. Within my sphere of influence in Nigeria, I had done quite a number of things that made my brand quite like well known. And it was quite easy to transition that into a global audience and sort of reach a global space. And now I lead a company that is AI powered. It's a startup and we're still working around 
making sure that everything works right. And right now, everything I've learned from my active content creation experience, storytelling, markets, and everything, pointed into this brand today as being one of the, I would say, most exciting projects I've ever worked on because it requires me to leverage every single part of me into this thing I'm quite passionate about. So I didn't prepare any notes. I just thought to speak as freely as I can. But there are a number of things I would really love to state. It feels more like uh, the, the things that require you to do, to go all out with your experiences. The first is until you're able to simplify your complex ideas and your thoughts without losing any quality or value, you will struggle with producing your best work. What that means is if you cannot reduce all of these grandiose ideas you have in your head into the small and most manageable or digestible pieces, it'll be very difficult for you to create something worth listening to. For example, I spent 90 days learning the ins and outs of short form videos and how to capture engagement, how to win people's attention in the smallest time possible. Learning this for 90 days was not just reading books or anything. It was active practicing. I was making videos, publishing them, getting feedback, improving on them, iterating. And one video happened to create you know, a ripple effect that led into people learning and seeing about my work. But I would love to tell you that it wasn't that one video that did that job. It was the years of actively putting out content, sharing the things I know, which I like building this brand that made it possible because I, I can I can say for a fact, if I was waiting to have that viral moment, all of this problem would have happened. And it requires you to take one step after the other to really build out the things you need to build. And a few things to just do a quick recap. If you want to get into that space where you go from where you are right now to the place where your experiences are things people recognize and say, oh my goodness, this guy is really good. His content is amazing. It's funny. It goes beyond that. It goes more into what are the active steps you're taking to tell better stories? What are the active steps you're taking to make your audience be the, 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 the subject of your creations? How can you leverage your already existing skill sets and leverage everything together into one to give you upper hand above every other person? Learning about marketing, about storytelling, about um, video editing, about copywriting, helped me to know that, okay, there's a lot more I can do with my experiences that goes beyond just making videos. YouTubers today are not just YouTubers. They are writers. They are so many different things. Like You need to do all of these things put together to produce really, really compelling things that can last and can get people's attention, which eventually can become the currency for you to sort of live the life that you want. But I'd love to say this. Going global or reaching a global audience, going from just, you know, one guy creating videos in his bedroom in Ibarra to, like, leading a global company, it doesn't take just one day. It doesn't take one month even. It doesn't take a year. It doesn't take two years. This has been 2015 in the making up until now. And it requires you to go back time and time again. But I would say that the most effective thing that has made this journey worth it for me is taking periodic breaks. I don't know if anyone on this session has been following me for a while, but you know that there are certain times where I'll be off social media for maybe like a month or two. What I'm doing at that period is really doing like some very deep dives to understand how can I make what I'm doing better? You can't constantly be working yourself, be on the clock and still, you know, think you produce your best. You need to take, you know, like is some sort of sabbatical like I hit us and look into what you're doing. How can I make this thing better? You know? So for me, what I would usually do would be I'll plan and save up for that period because I know I'm be doing anything that requires me to make money. So save up enough that would help me sustain myself for those two months of active thinking, active brainstorming, trying to revamp the things I'm doing, going back to the drawing board to make things better. And when I'm coming back, I'm coming back with something better in a way that I'm able to do better for myself, for my experiences, for my 
uh, my like whatever it is, it comes. I, I get back better, and this started to put me on the map to see that okay, every single time I went on a long break, coming back, which is cliche, but I always have a viral video coming back because everything I've learned within that period of staying away, I'm putting it into the first set of videos I'm going to create so that I can generate massive impact to reach a better audience. And that's how all of this changed. And a few of the notable things that this journey has taken me through was first being recognized as a pixel hero, uh, which was really amazing. Um, yeah, I'm also in one of the exclusive Google Pixel fan clubs. Um, I've been interviewed on Pixels. I've been interviewed on NBC News in the US. Um, and a few other things that has pretty much happened. And all of this didn't come from just seeing that, okay, it's just videos. No, it goes beyond videos. It goes beyond content. It goes deeper into the things that make content possible, storytelling, marketing, um, brand identity, whatever services that makes this thing you're doing worth it, diversify them, break them into pieces. That's the only way you can leverage what you currently have. That's the only way you can go beyond this, you know, I don't want to call it local, but the current African market or African um, industry and go into a broader space that could recognize your expertise and what you do. There has to be added value. There has to be added value. Like as much as possible, there has to be added value. And there's this thing I would say, which is also pinned on my Twitter. It is that um, first add value, make it original and be authentic. Anything else, should be an experiment. And I still live by that today. If there's anything I want to do, I make sure that what I'm trying to do adds value. It is original to me and is the most authentic version of myself. And any other thing I'm trying outside of anything is just experimenting with what works and what doesn't. And I hope that in any way, this has been insightful. And I hope that if anyone has questions, is that something that's allowed here? If you have questions or anything really, I would love to um, take them at this point. Uh, I'm looking through the comments and I don't know. All right, so if you have questions, okay, how can I get traffic organically? Um, I think in the things I've shared, getting organic traffic requires one thing, and it's the same process I just shared. It is whatever it is that you're doing, whatever content it is you're putting together, whatever it is, make sure it is adding value. It is the most authentic version of what you're doing, and it's original to you. If you can tell stories that captivates people, believe me, it is important to put the people you are reaching out to first. So I'm making this particular video today. Who am I trying to speak to? Does this person understand so, so, and so? If they do, great. Now, what part of them would be willing to invest in this thing I'm putting out there? The story you're telling is not about you. Yes, it is your story, but it's not about you. It is about the person listening to you. Like I would always say, the way you tell your story will determine the response of those who listen to you. If what you're saying is common knowledge, I'm sorry, there won't be organic traffic. If what you're saying is regurgitated you know, information, it wouldn't really matter. But if there's a piece of yourself, if there's a story that is very dear to you, your pain points, your depressions, your personality, your experiences, these are things that people value the most. An example, um, I'll just tell you the truth. People like gossip <laughs> and give that to them. But in a very, um, what's the word? In a well-presented manner, right? I made a podcast about my experience, you know, getting married, having a child and all of that into a podcast. And right now it has close to like 40,000 views on YouTube. That's the very first video I've ever made that has that much views. And it was an, it was an hour long. So people value experiences, things that make you tick. Tell that in your story, in your content, involve that. 
one person I think you should study, or two people actually. Number one is Corti. I don't know if anyone, I mean, most people will know Corti. Study Corti, study Lai Wasabi. Those two people involve, they, they use stories, things that make you tick in their videos, in their content. And it just makes you go, ah, oh, nice. So, um, yeah. And you can see these two people I mentioned, I've gone global to a really great extent. I'm seeing another question here. How can you break through fear from the of monetizing your skills? Is there a good time to start selling digital products in your content creation journey? There's no time. Like I told you, go back and listen to this. The strategy that I told you about, which is I wanted to start selling, and I wanted to do a workshop that people will pay a thousand ten thousand naira for. But I started with doing Instagram Live for free, which obviously is free, and then a webinar that was hundred naira. People want to attend. And then they understood that there was more value in this. And then 71 people paid for the 10,000 error workshop. So try this strategy and see what works for you. Um, do you design brand logos? Yes, I used to, but not, not anymore. Um, at what point can you start reaching out to brands? Or do you just keep creating and wait for the brand to come around? You can start reaching to brands at any time. It could be UGC content. It could be... Um, see, you do, like every creator tier has brand partnership opportunities. You could be a nano creator, micro creator, macro, whatever it is, you can reach, reach out to brands. If your content is good, if they can see their brand collaborating with you, it will work out well. Uh, so you is saying, how did you know what platform to focus on per time? As your journey progressed, did you have a problem of overthinking if you should post on Instagram, TikTok, or YouTube? I specifically, I specifically focused on Instagram because Instagram tends to be one of those places that you can experience massive growth over time easily, and then you can then diversify this growth into other places. The truth is, focus on one platform and do that well. Let your influence be well felt on that platform and then slowly start getting people to go to your other platforms easily. For example, I built so much on Instagram, and over time, I realized, okay, Instagram was already doing well, like 50K followers, and then I started going on to TikTok as well. TikTok got to 60K, even surpassed Instagram, and then, you know, I, got, I went back to Instagram, and right now, I think Instagram should be about, about 140,000, so TikTok is still on 70-something thousand. So leverage one, get to the height of it, and then diversify into other places. Um, Regina is asking, at what point can you start reaching out to brands? Yeah, like I just mentioned, I already answered that. Um, Success is saying, how do I overcome self-doubt and have liberty mindset to see the possibilities of a career in digital creation? I mean, you might find this hard to believe, but I, I have very terrible imposter syndrome and, you know, stage fright. <laughs> I couldn't do all these things I'm doing right now, like some seven, eight years ago. So... It takes time, but the self-doubt is proof that you are doing something right. So focus on learning about yourself a lot more and fighting those demons that probably is injuring you from being able to, what's the word, put yourself out there. It doesn't take, it doesn't take so much, but I believe that you can, you, can, you, can, you can go beyond what you know right now. Like, it's a fear. It's not the end of the world. So... Take it one step at a time. Take it one step at a time. Start with maybe making a video a week or a month. Get better, improve. But one thing I recommend is try and do a challenge. Challenge yourself to do something. You know, challenge yourself to do something. For example, I did 90 days of content creation to understand story, short form videos. I think you can practice something else. There are people who do 30 days, and by the end of the 30 days, they've probably gotten like 10K followers. And you'll be wondering why. It's the tenacity and the consistency that they put into it. Um, there are so many more que questions right here, and I'm not sure I'll be able to get all of them. But uh, there is something I believe would really help quite a number of you on this call. And... Uh, there are a number of videos I've made on my YouTube channel that speaks to this. 
you know, quite a number of them. I've made close to like 180 videos on YouTube. So I'll really just advise you go to my YouTube or the major Jigbile and you would see as many videos as possible that can help you, you know, sort of make this mindset a little, a little bit different. Um, Precious is asking, how can I feel more confident in front of the camera? I'm so critical of myself. I am a very terrible person in front of the camera. My very first video on YouTube, I was looking down and I was counting my, my fingers throughout the entire video. It was that bad, but I still posted it. And today I can sit and speak in front of 10,000 people and not flinch. You build it over time. And this is five years in the making. So the more you do it, the better it is you get at it. You know, like there are videos I will still post up until now. And I'll be so critical of the video, like this part is not fine, this part is not fine. But one thing I need to tell you is most people don't notice the errors that you notice in your videos if you don't talk about the errors. And I just mentioned it now, <laughs> maybe because the video is doing well. The podcast I posted with my wife, there were some parts in the audio that was terrible and it was very glitchy. The focus on her face was sort of, you know, glittering almost through the entire video. But I was like, you know what? I'm not going to kill myself. I'll still put it out regardless. And the video went out and people are quite excited to see it. So the more critical you have with yourself, the more you will hinder yourself from putting your work out there. So just chill. Everything works out eventually. Um, you want to sell books on Seller, any advice? I feel like there are great creators on Seller that uh, have things on their page that can really help you. I know for one, Salem King has a book on Seller and a few other persons. So, uh, I, I mean, you could just uh, go through people's pages and you will see stories that they've, told, like they've, that they've said about their content. I think Financial Jennifer as well. I, I can't remember most people off the top of my head right now. So. Uh, I'm trying to see more questions. How do you identify the value in what you do? Let's say in situations where you can't see it. I think first would be the way you carry it. Um, for example, podcasts, nobody sees your analytics, but I will come on Instagram and make it seem as though I've created the best thing in the world. You know, it's the way you carry it. It's the way you talk about it. It creates much more, a lot more value for you. So focus on that and you see how things will start to improve. It's the mindset to a great extent. Um, and this applies to whether you're encountering, you know, the fear of rejection, fear of failure. Know that all of these things are coming because you have something good going for you. All of these things are coming because you have something good going for you. So uh, I really hope that with this short period of engagement we've had, you can go back to this video and sort of learn a few more things from it. But if you ever have any more questions and you want answers to them, uh, occasionally, once in two weeks, I usually share active stuff on my newsletter that would sort of help. Or you can also share, you know, like there's a channel on Instagram, broadcast channel that I occasionally will come and talk about things whenever we need to. So, um, yeah, I hope everyone has been able to get the best out of this session. Personally, I've enjoyed talking about this. Um, and I really hope everyone has a good day.